65 years after a little boy was found dead inside a cardboard box, police finally have an identity for him. Philadelphia authorities announced Joseph Augustus Zarelli was identified using DNA as well as genetic genealogy techniques. Joseph was just four when investigators say he was beaten to death. The most recent process to identify him started in 2019, when authorities exhumed his body and used the modern DNA analysis to try and find family members. They were able to track down his mother and father, who are now dead, as well as a few living siblings. Despite pleas for people to come forward with information when the boy was found in 1957, police eventually ran out of leads. Their only clues were the boy's naked body wrapped in a cheap blanket and put into a box that once held a bassinet. The boy appeared to be malnourished, and his body bore the signs of recent and past trauma. In his very short life, it was apparent that this child experienced horrors that no one, no one should ever be subjected to. When people think about the boy in the box, a profound sadness is felt, not just because a child was murdered, but because his entire identity and his rightful claim to own his existence was taken away. Dina, can you tell us more about how DNA advancements are helping solve cases like this? Yeah, this is a perfect example because of the number of years that has gone by. No amount of uh, investigative witness interviewing would have discovered this, but the DNA was able to identify him and perhaps it might lead them to discover if they find the killer or find out what happened, perhaps there was somebody else's DNA that was also left on the body. That would be really hopeful because I think not only do they want to identify him, they really want to find out exactly what happened and how he died. Yeah, and of course, this case is not solved as yet. So, Terry, what's next for the investigation? Is finally finding out how he died, by whom? Is it is it easier to find out this than to find out his identity? Well, you know, now that they have his identity, I think it will make it a little bit easier to find out exactly what happened. We may not have DNA evidence of the person who killed him or the people who killed him, but we can now, with a name, trace back his life. And that's where that footwork, that investigation is going to come in. He is the son of two different people. Now, even though they have already died, we can go back and look at what kind of life this child had. And the evidence and the you know information that we have so far is that he had bruises, his body had been battered and beaten, not just at the time of his death, but apparently he had older bruises in his body. So I do think that the footwork is going to be done here. And if in fact the siblings or some other relatives are still around, they can be interviewed and perhaps they have information that can lead the authorities to some additional information. So that identity is critical. Thank goodness we had that DNA identified and hopefully one day soon they will be able to determine what happened to this young boy. It's a tragic case and it's a horrible way to go. Four years old, it's just really tragic. Absolutely, but we're glad that some answers were made. Dina, Terry, thank you as always. And thank you for joining us here on Law & Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America.